Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Good Book Hunting. This is a pre-recorded feature where we use the top requested books by you, our Westfield patrons, to find you books like those books, because there's a serious possibility that if you're on the holds list for one of these books, it might not come to you for a while. So we will find you about 20-ish books to read in the meantime using four different resources. These resources do change. This month, we are doing um, the CW Mars catalog, an online resource called Novelist, a online resource called Fantastic Fiction, and good old Google, like the plain version, not Google Books, which we have used uh, in a previous couple of videos. So if you're interested in that, go back and find that. That's not what we're doing today. What we are doing today is looking up read-alikes for the new Frederick Backman novel, Anxious People. This uh, came out back in September and is still on our high holds list, so clearly there are people just waiting. So the description of this book, the short one, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, is a poignant, charming novel about a crime that never took place, a would-be bank robber who disappears into thin air, and eight extremely anxious strangers who find they have more in common than they ever imagined. Humorous, compassionate, and wise, Anxious People is an ingeniously constructed story about the enduring power of friendship, forgiveness, and hope, the things that save us even in the most anxious times. So this is a fiction, contemporary, kind of mystery, kind of humor book. Um, and it is also translated. I believe Frederick Backman is Sweden if I'm not mistaken. Swedish, from Sweden. Those two things are different. Anyway, so for today's purposes, Anne will be showcasing the resource Fantastic Fiction, which is a favorite of the circulation staff in the adult department and the different ways that it can help you. I will be using Google, Olivia will be using the catalog, and Erica will be using Novelist. So we'll let Anne share her screen, take you through fantastic fiction, and then we'll all come back and tell you how good the read-alikes we found were. So let's get started. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. I am going to show you how to use fantastic fiction, which is a, a search engine in England. And let me switch my screen over, and we can go from there. And the fantastic fiction site, as you can see, sort of lists the latest books, the ones that are most popular. And you can search by author, as you can see up here in this menu. You can search by book, and you can search by series. It is an excellent resource. If you're reading part of a series, it'll tell you where it comes in a book. But I'm actually gonna, I find the author search the best. So I'm gonna do the Frederick. Bachman. There you go. And this is Mr. Bachman himself. It tells you when he was born, the author's information, and then it lists series. He apparently has one series. The first book is Beartown, written in 17 and in 18, Us Against You. But the book we're interested in is The Anxious People, and that's here at the end of the novels list. So if I click on that, Anxious People comes up, and then it lists information about this book. Um, as Gretchen sort of ran or, or ran over uh, or told you about the title, it's similar here. It gives you a description of the book. And if you keep going down, you can actually read a preview if you're curious to check out what the book actually is like. You can get a few chapters. But down below, it says similar books by other authors. And the first book that novelist recommends is How Lulu Lost Her Mind by Rachel Gibson. Um, and if you click on that, you will get the same information as you got on the previous one about the book. From the New York Times, best, this book is about the New York Times bestselling author of The Art of Running in Heels comes a compassionate, poignant, and often humorous story of the complicated relationship between a mother and a daughter. The second book that they recommend on fantastic fiction is Jennifer Weiner called The Big Summer. And if you click on that, same sort of information about the book. It will describe um, 
the book, six years after a flight that ended their friendship, Daphne Berg is shocked when Drew Cavanaugh walks back into her life, looking as lovely and successful as ever, with a massive favor to ask. Again, relationships and sort of the weavings of that, which is what Bachman's known for. And it sounds like this book would be similar. So to me, these sound like similar, similar books. The next book that they recommend is by Fanny Flagg, if any of you are old enough. She was a TV actress, if I remember, in the dark ages when TVs were black and white. No, I, I, I just, I have no idea. I just know the name and the author. Um, but the next book is Fanny Flagg, Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop. Bud Threadgood grew up in the bustling little railroad town of Whistle Stop with his mother, Ruth church going and proper and his aunt Iggy, the fun loving hellraiser together they ran the town's popular whistle stop cafe known far and wide for its fun and famous fried green tomatoes and as bud often said of his childhood to his daughter ruthie how lucky can you get again a relationship novel sort of heartwarming it sounds like and let's go back if you flip back you will see the last Description that they recommend from fantastic fiction is Us Three by Ruth Jones. Again, the title, even the title sounds like a relationship novel, which is what Bachman's book is of anxious people. Um, Friends Forever is a difficult promise to keep. Meet Lana, Judith, and Katrin, best friends since primary school when they swore an oath on a curly whirly rapper they would always be there for each other, come what may. And it sounds like uh, that may be challenged in the book, but again, a relationship book. So fantastic fiction has given you three relationship books as not read-alikes, but similar reads. Um, and I think it sounds, I mean, at least from my quick assessment, it sounds like it's a fairly good, uh, number of books to recommend. One of the other things that I just want to pass on to you about, um, about fantastic fiction is that if you go back to the author page, if you look for the author, Frederick Bachman, they will usually books, they will usually list books that the author recommends. So if you like a particular author and you're curious about the books that they like, scroll farther down in fantastic fiction and they'll list a couple of books that um, the author, this author, Frederick Bachman or any other author you're looking at uh, recommends. So that's it for fantastic fiction. All right, so actually I think that out of the other times that we've definitely done this with fantastic fiction, that was probably the best list we've seen it give back. There were some issues when we've done this for um, some bigger name mystery authors that it just kind of gave you back what was popular and new in like the same genre and just kind of big names, but I'd actually not heard of most of those books. Not that that means anything, <laughs> but there you go. Sometimes it's better than others. Uh, speaking of things that were not good, um, Google was a struggle bus once again, and I'm not going to take you through my whole entire thought process because there's a video where I do that. But one of the things that is really interesting with Frederick Bachman is that even though he's very popular and his new book is popular, all of the lists that I found were dated mostly 2016 because they were released in accordance with a man called Ove, which is one of his, like his biggest title. And there were no books for anxious people, no book lists for anxious people. They were all from 2016. So I had to do a little bit of a year hunt to find a more recent list. And the best that I could do was actually 2018. So do pay attention on Google to how recent those book lists are, because, you know, if you read a lot, you might have been, oh, well, if this is like, you know, four years old, you might've read a lot of those books. So I did find a really good list from new in books that is again from June of 2018. And so these were all new releases in 2018. So the first book it recommends is The Spirit of Silk by Catherine Macbeth. This is the story of a woman who refused to conform. Su Yin and her best friend Lan Yi resisted marriage thanks to the financial independence of working at the silk factory. 
But after Lan Yi committed suicide in defiance of her parents' insistence of being married, Su Yin takes a vow of celibacy according to the culture of the sisterhood, Zhishunu. But soon she finds herself caught up in the Wall Street crash and a wave of women headed from South China to British Malaya. Is there, and then there's a young man, and will she renege on her vow of celibacy? And I was immediately just like, all right, this is not something that I would have thought of thinking of anxious people. But again, this is a book for people who like the writing of Frederick Backman, so do keep that in mind. It also recommends Four Takeaways and a Funeral by Carrie Knorr. Mavis and Lumpy are getting married. They only want a small affair with a few close friends, a celebrant on Skype, and a hot and spicy theme. But it turns out that Mavis and Lumpy have very different ideas of what they actually want their wedding to be. There's also Without a Country by I see Kulin, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, this is a translated text. Um, as Hitler, as the Hitler reign of terror over Germany begins, Gerhard and Elsa Schliemann must flee with other German Jews in search of sanctuary. Um, but then they discover a haven in Turkey where universities and hospitals welcome them. So it's a immigration story across Europe. This is the only book on this list I'm familiar with at all, All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen. After marrying into Nashville's elite, Nina Browning is living the good life. But sometimes the middle-class small town girl in Nina wonders if she strayed too far from what she once was. Tom Volpe is a hardworking single dad trying to raise his daughter, Lila. Um, and they meet. So that one's more of a romance. Um, and then the, this list continues on, but I'll just give you the last one here. Um, the Things We Don't Say by Ella Carey. Renowned London artist Patrick Adams painted his most famous work nearly 60 years ago. A portrait of his beloved, and years after his death, 90-year-old Emma still has that painting hanging, and that portrait becomes a symbol of much to come. So I feel like that list really ran the gamut, which is why I wanted to give you those suggestions. But again, they're all based on Frederick Backman's writing style and they're from 2018. So um, in terms of things more actually related to the book at hand, Olivia, would you like to tell us what the catalog has to say? Yeah, so I kind of had a hard time with this one because the catalog forces you to pick one aspect of the book that you like. Um, so I went with fiction slash humorous slash general. Um, and I did return one other Frederick Bachman book. So I think it's a pretty good list if that shows up on there. Um, and these all, I read the summaries really quick of all of them. They all are, um, you know, family relationships and they, you know, have that humor sprinkled in there with some seriousness as well. Um, so the first one is on Turpentine Lane by Eleanor Lipman, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman, Mostly Dead Things, a novel by Kristen Arnett, and Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts, an adventure by Kate Raculia. And then last one is Chronicles of a Radical Hag with Recipes, a novel by Lorna uh, Landvik, which I think is possibly my favorite title ever. Um, <laughs> doesn't get much better than that one. Um, and yeah, so that's what I got back. Again, these are humorous books. So if you liked something else about the book, um, you would have to try searching um, for that. I like how at this point we're running the gambit of like books on mental health and relationships, the weirdest list that goes from like romance to Hitler. <laughs> and then <laughs> Olivia has, you know, ha humor and hags. So um, clearly we are just, we have a little bit of something for everyone here. Um, but Erica, why don't, why don't you try to get us a little bit closer maybe to the actual book itself? <laughs> All right, so I used the tool novelist, which is as always available through our website. And that kind of gives it a little bit more of a personalized list because it looks really at what the book is about and it gives you back a list curated by other librarians. 
So the first one is The 100-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson. Um, apparently the 100-Year-Old Man is more of a romp while Anxious People is more somber in parts, um, but they're both amusing, engaging, and intricately plotted Swedish novels. Uh, the next one is Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. Um, and this is a, an eclectic bunch of people are thrown together during a secretive retreat uh, or a hostage situation, as it is the case in Anxious People, um, in these witty mainstream fiction stories. So and then readers are treated to some surprising revelations. So it's kind of like people push together and then it's a bottle episode. Um, so then you have Nights of Rain and Stars by Maeve Binchy. Um, and it's another group of strangers forming bonds during um, a hostage crisis and anxious people or the aftermath of a boating accident in Nights of Rain and Stars. Um, and it's revealing the sympathetic backstories of these characters who have been thrown together in this difficult situation. Uh, next one is The Summer Guests by Mary Alice Monroe. Um, another strangers cooped up in a situation in the summer guests it's a farm during a hurricane um and then number five we've got eleanor oliphant is completely fine by gail honeyman um, which was a really big book i think last summer how was it um these books are witty they both have the relation the genre of relationship fiction and the subjects insecurity uh, interpersonal relations and social isolation and have characters that are sympathetic, awkward, and quirky. So that one's not quite as in-depth as to how they are similar, but, and I'm just going to throw out the, the title of number six here. I know we usually just do five, but I just really appreciate this title of An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helene Turston. Um, and it's both, uh, it's another offbeat and witty book. They're both Swedish to English translations. Um, they both have solitude and relation in their relationship fiction, and they have characters that are quirky. So that's what we've got from Novelist. Um, I think that's a pretty decent list of if you want stories of kind of quirky, offbeat, witty strangers thrown together in situations that have to reveal stuff about each other. It sounds like that's kind of a decent list to go off of. So once again, and I'm sure surprising exactly zero of us, Novelist definitely comes up with the most specifically related to the book Anxious People. If that is a story that is of interest to you, you know, a trope, whatever it is. And again, Novelist is a free resource that you have access to as a Westfield Athenaeum patron through our website using our online resources page. So do use that. It's also um, in the catalog, and we will have several other videos where we show you how to use its different functionality, so stay tuned for those. But again, there is no bad read-alike, because it might be that, you know, you just want to read anxious people, but you'll read something else like Frederick Backman because you've enjoyed his stuff in the past, so maybe another one of these books that has come up is more your style. Or you just heard one of these fantastic titles and you're like that. I don't even know what it's about, but I'm gonna read about hags or old ladies or a hundred year old men, just whatever it is. Uh, our goal always is to help you find more books. So hopefully that helped you out and we will be back showcasing another resource next week. So thank you so much and have a good one guys. Bye.